In Photoshop, go over to the Lasso tool in the Tools panel. Create a selection. First the irregular one, just any kind of shape. Doesn't have to be like that, it could be square, it could be rectangular, could be elliptical, anything. But simply just create that sort of design. And now you can fill it. You can fill it with a gradient. So just go over here to the gradient tool, select that. If you're using 24.5, then you can see gradient as well as classic gradient. You can fill it with a classic gradient as well, perfectly reasonable. But I'm just gonna go with gradient and apply. And what you can see, you get this, you get a gradient layer. Now, if you're using it with the classic gradient, you won't get that layer. But in this case, I've got a layer, and now what I can do, I can apply effects to it. Go down the bottom, as long as it's selected, go to effects, or go to layer, and layer style and bevel emboss. And you can change the settings all over the place with this. Inner bevel always works quite nicely. You can also change the depth, also size. I'm going to go with about 57. You can also change the gloss contour. You can also change the angle. You can tweak it. But I want something like that. Gives a bit of depth, looks great. Click OK. Now, I'm going to define this as a pattern. To do that, to make it really easy, I'm not going to have the background. I don't want that background. I want transparency. So just go to the background and go to delete. Now you can bring it back at any point. You can undo. So yes. To define as a pattern, you need to go for the rectangular marquee tool. You can't use it just a elliptical or anything else. You need to have this type of selection. Edit and then down to define pattern. Give it a name and click OK. If the document's 5,000 by 5,000 or 6,000, you will find that you can't define it. But it has to be a fairly small size, 1,000 by 1,000, 2,000 by 2,000. Now I'm just going to go back, back to the standard first without anything on it. Edit and fill. Now you can put this to a layer. You don't have to just create it on the background layer. This can be applied to a layer, but I'm just going to go with the background Edit and Fill, Pattern, also go to Custom Pattern. So just go down here, select the one you just created, something like that, and make certain script is on, and Symmetry Fill. Click OK. Now there's a number of options. My favorite one, number seven, Dilative Rotation Symmetry. Also, you can modify this, Pattern Translation. So the end result could be literally anything, thousands of different designs. I like to actually give some detail to the design you, I've just created. Sometimes you set it to a, some settings and it'll be very, very thin. You can hardly notice it. But in this, you can see the design. Minus 43, like I say, it depends what you want. Just change those pan, pattern translations. Just move it backwards and forwards until you're happy with the design. Click OK. And then you've got that. Now, sometimes it might not fill the entire image. You can see there's a few gaps just here. You might have to apply it a couple of times if you want to fill it totally. You can then go, if you want to, go to filter and stylize and oil paint if you want to smooth it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is. Then go to file and save as. And I want to save it as a PSD file. The reason for that, displacement files need that. So just go to, on your computer, don't want it on my desktop, I want it there on my desktop, so let's just go for that. Test two. Make sure you give it the right name and click OK. You can now use that as a displacement. So let's go to filter, distort, and displace. Gonna go with horizontal scale 40, 40, stretch to fit, doesn't particularly matter, it's gonna be the same size, and repeat edge pixels. Click OK. Select the file and open. And you can see that creates a very fragmented, unusual effect using this approach. Now, of course, the end result will be very different depending on the source material. So if your design is different from this, it's clearly going to be a slightly different result. And you can apply it a couple of times. You can go to filter, display, and display again to fragment it even more. Also, another option, go back to the image. You can then go to Filter and Filter Gallery. And in this case, go to Glass and you can find that in the Distort category. 
you have to give it a texture. So I'm just going to go over here. At the moment, it's test one. That was my previous one. Just go load texture. So click here, load texture, and set file. Click OK. And now you can see the result of that. And you can, of course, vary it. So distortion, if you reduce that down, gets obviously more and more like the original. If you push it really max, you can get some very unusual effects, especially if you set the smoothness to the max. Set the scaling to 100. You don't have to. You can reduce it down. That creates even more interesting designs. But I'm just going to go for, or maybe set it to 200. Create even more designs. You don't have to keep it at 100%. But 100% is what I'm going to go with and click OK. But you can also, if you wish, apply again. So filter and filter gallery and that result. Now sometimes I find that applying it a couple of times it's just too much. Just once is fine. And also you can apply other effects. So filter, stylize and oil paint just to smooth it a bit. So if you want a nice smoothing effect, now you might not want it at 10, maybe just a little bit of smoothing that's just about four. Click OK. Because sometimes, unfortunately, with the symmetry effect, the dilated one especially, the central part becomes quite smeary. Whereas outside, it's fairly clear. But it does get quite crunched in the center. Well, you can, of course, apply other effects as well. Image, auto tone, or maybe adjustments, and levels. Or maybe use saturation, vibrance. Just tweak it and click OK.